great search brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey. And Adafruit. Bleedy uses her power of engineering, smarts, and more to search the DigiKey site to find something you might need. We might need. Yes. Someone might need. What is this week's great search? Okay, so let's go to the computer. All right, not surprisingly, this week's great search is about a product that is not available, a product mm. you can't get, and how are we going to find a replacement? So uh, for a lot of boards that we've made, um, you know, boards with um, AVR chips, boards with Espresso chips, they do not have native USB. They have native UART. And uh, the UART is how you program them, and the UART is how you debug them, and, and how you can send data to a computer and such. Um, again, we love native USB, but a lot of chips still don't have them. Lower cost chips particularly don't have a uh, USB core attached. And so you'll see on a board like this, this is the main processor chip, the uh, Atmega 328, our very favorite. And then over here, this chip, as you can see, this is a USB port. This chip converts the USB from here to UART to communicate with um, the uh, microcontroller there. So two separate chips. Um, we've been using USB to UART chips for easily 20 years. I mean, I think we started with the FT232BL, which we actually put some in the store recently because we, we found half a reel. And um, they are pretty much an essential part. Now, you can use a microcontroller and program it to become a USB to UART converter, but we, we really just sort of prefer to use an off-the-shelf one. We find that they can um, handle baud rates much better. They often have um, modem control pans. They can light up LEDs. They, they can have, uh, you know, a lot more capabilities, and I think they're a lot more um, reliable and rugged. I've sort of I've liked them a little bit more. Um, so that said, uh, the chip that we've used a lot recently is the CP, CP2104 from Scilabs. A lovely USB to UART chip, inexpensive, easy to use, doesn't require a crystal, um, doesn't require a lot of components, very plug and play, and works up to like two or three megabot, which is really fast, good, especially if you have uh, ESP32 chips, because those they are very large chips, and if you want to program them, you want to push that data out as quickly as possible. So, um, lovely, it's a CP2104. So I was like, oh, you know, let's buy some more CP2104s. And then I'm like, let's go over here. And then like, okay, let's, okay, they're not in stock, but maybe I can back order them. And it now says not recommended for new design. NRND. That's yeah. what, NRND, yeah, I know. NRND. It's not end of line, but it's kind of the like, you know, the, the best by date is, is approaching quickly, right? This is, this is, they're still available. You can still buy them, but not recommended for new designs. You can still maintain old designs, but please don't design this in. We can't really stop you, but you're going to be sad because this is going to be um, discontinued shortly. Um, why does this happen? Um, even for a chip as popular as this, I think it's actually because they, they really do want to push people towards maybe a cheaper process. Um, or they've, there's a little bit of bugs or, or improvements that they want to make, and they kind of want to, to shift you over. Again, still can get this, but not recommended for new designs. So the question is, what do we do instead? So let's look at, you know, if we're going to, you know, and I, of course I contacted, uh, you know, Scilabs. So was like, oh, do you have like a drop-in replacement? And they said, no, we don't. We have this other chip. It's not a drop-in. It's very similar. Um, but I was like, well, you know what, might, might as well look to see if there's any other chips just in case I'm kind of missing out um, and see what, what the market is because there's a couple different companies that make USB to UART chips. Um, so let's go to interface controllers. And uh, because, of course, we're doing a new design, we want only active stuff, not NRND. And um, we want a particular function. The function we want is a bridge that is USB to UART. Note that there are like USB to Ethernet, USB to FIFO, USB to I2C, uh, USB to SPI, but we want in particular uh, USB to UART. And uh, let's apply all. Now, you know, we're doing a design spec and so I don't really care if it's in stock right now. What I care about is like, can I get it in general? Is it is it normally stocked? It's available. Um, so there's a couple things. So there are some chips that are available right now. Um, you know, the FT2321, uh, sorry, 231, this is from uh, FTDI, classic uh, maker of uh, USB to serial converters. Um, however, you know, I'm kind of uh, interested most in, in pricing, and so I'm going to say, you know what, 500 quantity, which is about how many I buy at a time, 
um, what's what's my what's a good bet for pricing? Sort by price, and it's odd. It does not. Oh, maybe because reels are bigger. So let me one second. Do one thousand. Weird. The sort by price is not quite sorting by price. That's a new one. Let me get rid of the quantity pricing. This is exciting. Okay. Um, so, uh, still not working. I don't know why. Okay. So, the, um, there's Cypress, and they make the uh, Psi 7C um, series of converters. I use them. Um, they're, you know, about $4 a piece. Um, there's also the, like I mentioned, the um, FT230, also about, you know, $2 a piece. Um, the replacement that uh, Scilabs recommends um, is actually one of the ones that's up here, it's, and it's $1.50, so if you're, if you're going for price, and it's, it's close enough, um, there is the CP2102. Now, one thing to watch for the CP2102 is this is unusual. I've never really seen it before, but it's a chip that's available in three packages, but they're all with the same name. So they're all QFNs. But there's a 20 QFN, a 24 QFN, and a 28 QFN. So um, one thing to watch for is, you know, usually I'm like, oh, just use like, you know, the first chunk of the name and then and the, and the, the package, you know, in QFN or TSOP, and then I'll tell you. You actually need to have the full um, part number because this one is the QFN 20, this one is the QFN 24, and this is the QFN 28. So looking at the 24, um, let's show you the thing, because I read through this data sheet. I will find the interesting part. So the good news is like it can go really fast, 3 megabaud, which is nice. Um, there are different GPIO functions for each package. And hold on, there was this cute. Spreadsheet. Hold on. Charge. Oh, sorry. It's at the very top. Okay. Um, so there's the 28, 24, and 20, and each one has slightly different functionalities. So they're all lead free, yay. Um, the 20 is the simplest. It doesn't have charger battery detect. It doesn't have VIO and VDD pins, which means you can't have it like 1.8 power. It's, I think, whatever, you know, VDD IO is 3.3 volts, and you kind of have to stick with that. Um, the 24 adds the VIO and VDD pins. And the 28 adds uh, battery charging detection and has more GPIOs. The battery charge detection is kind of interesting. Um, I, it, you know, it's kind of, I think, for um, if, if you have something where you want to, like, determine if you have um, enough power availability, like, it can output to tell you, like, yes, you can, you can draw that much power from the charger, uh, from the USB port to charge your battery. Um, the QFN24 is the one that is closest to the CP2104 in pinout. It is like 95% the same. It is not 100% the same. The difference is um, there's no VPP pin. So usually on the CP2104, there's a programming pin uh, that you have to put a 10 microfarad capacitor on. You don't need to do that. And the other part that is most important is there is now this requirement for a VBUS divider. This is a, like a detection circuit to tell it when VBUS is connected. Historically, you would wire this up directly to the VBUS pin. Um, you know, they've changed the design. You now have to use a resistor divider. So it's not drop-in compatible. Um, it's, it's a little sad because, you know, I also feel like if it had been like one resistor was needed, you know, you could have like, 
use that VPP capacitor and maybe like rerouted that package, you know, instead of a capacitor, it would have been a resistor and you can route it. But um, for whatever reason, they've, they've changed it so that you, you definitely need to have this resistor divider. So um, in my breakouts, uh, sorry, USB serial, you know, so I designed, uh, another thing to note is there's the CP2102 and the CP2102N, also different. You want the N variety. Um, so the good news is that, you know, it's it's not too bad of a difference. Let me turn off the back. Uh, it's not too different than... Um, Then the CP2104, um, you know, I've in this design, I've added uh, these two resistors that VBUS detect over here. And you can see in the previous design, this is where the, um, the VPP capacitor was, like this is kind of an empty space. I deleted that and sort of shoved these wires down to make room for these two resistors. So that said, um, you know, it's, I wish it was drop-in replacement. It's not, but... They're gonna have it in stock, you know, in a month. It's about the same price as a CP2104. You do have to do a slight respin, but um, all in all, it's not a bad respin. And so, like, you know, you'll have to pay for another stencil and another program if you're if you're doing your assembly. But I'm pretty confident that functionally, you're gonna have the same, you know, functionality and support that you had with the CP2104. Whereas, jumping to a different USB serial converter, I'll say each one of them has its own little quirks. Um, the side labs ones are a little, uh, have different quirks than the FTDI ones, which have different quirks than the side press. So I'm probably just going to move um, to uh, this, you know, version. And I do like the QFN package. I know there's other USB serial converters that come in like TSOP, but this is so nice and compact and, and it's so reliable. I really like that you can go at high baud rates and it's consistent. I like the LED drivers and and it doesn't do weird things when you plug it in. Sometimes other chips, you know, like pins start toggling. Uh, kind of funky when you plug it in um, but this one is, is very reliable and so I, I like it so I'm going to have to re-spin about 10 different boards from the CP21 to the CP2102 ah it's what it is uh, we're living in this land but um, when they come back into stock I'm going to order some samples and get those boards designed so All that's right. a great search hopefully helpful for others lacking the uh, CP2104s in this silicon shortage life we have where in the world is